Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. I'm going to be showing you uh, this game. This is round two, game two of the 2021 War of the Ring International Tournament. I'm playing free, and at this point in the tournament, I am actually one and two. So I've lost two games and won one. And um, as a reminder for all the viewers, I won this tournament last year. <laughs> so uh, I'm not doing a great job defending my title. I need to win all of my next five games to be able to make it into the uh, top cut. We'll see how I do. Um, there is a chance if I win four of my next five, then I'll be able to be a wild card. But overall, I'm just gonna play one game at a time and try and have fun. So this will be a good analysis of this game. Also, you may notice that the layout of the board is, it, it feels like it may be cut up or zoomed in a little. I'm, I'm doing that so that hopefully it's a, just a little easier for everybody to see if you're watching on mobile or even if you're just watching on your computer screen. So I, this is the beginning of the game. I'm playing free. This is game two against my uh, opponent. And um, you can see our opening rolls. So think for a moment what you would do here. I have, we prove the Swifter and Aomer, and I have these dice, two Will of the West, a uh, character and an uh, army muster, or just a muster, sorry. You can see my opponent did not get two musters, which is always a little disappointing as free because you can't get Saruman turn one. I mean, always disappointing as Shadow when you can't get Saruman turn one. So what do you do here? I, I, did not honestly consider this as much as I should, but I think when I look back on this, I think what I should have done is use a character to separate Strider to Moria, and then use We Prove the Swifter to move five spaces to Minas Tirith and then crown him. So I can use three dice to crown Aragorn turn one, and he has two eyes, so you know that's uh, you know may maybe it's worth avoiding that you know it's it's pretty close one way or another but i get to draw a new character card i i'm not i don't give him any rings to get aragorn turn one i i don't really know why i didn't do that i didn't end up doing that and um yeah i'm just not sure if you start with two movement um and a palantir and will of the west really sorry one palantir one character and one will of the west you can get, and with We Prove the Swifter as your opening card, you can get Aragorn, turn one. Separate to Moria, and then five to Minas Tirith. So I think that maybe I just didn't realize that was even possible at the time I played this game. This was a month ago. So I I don't know. Um, it's good to analyze games. Um, what I ended up doing was just moving the Fellowship. So you can see he musters Isengard, and then I move, and he catches me on the first movement, and I get revealed. I take one corruption because I don't want to lose Gandalf to a one and I have good cards to play. And at this point, I think I'm still thinking maybe, maybe Strider can get there in a single, in a single action. If I get to, I guess, what do I need to get to? If I get to four movement, then Strider can go straight from the fellowship to Dol Amroth with, we prove the Swifter. Um, four plus three plus two is nine so yes so i could get so i think that's what i'm thinking at this point i don't want to spend three dice to do it but i think three dice on turn one it's going to pay off over the course of the game all right so i get revealed and uh, he starts moving armies i hide i move again and he catches me again and i get revealed again and at this point i think well i don't know may maybe it makes more sense to go high pass at this point instead of come coming right here um I don't know. That's an interesting choice. What to, what to do? I often find that going to the high pass route, you end up taking as much corruption as the extra tile in Moria. Um, but this is definitely risky because I'm revealed here. I could take two extra tiles, one going in and one going out. And, and that's two extra tiles is probably not worth the extra movement. So this is, this is hunt is not starting off great. Um, maybe I should have lost Gandalf. I think the more I get hunted early, the more I'm thinking I'm going to save Gandalf to try and get full value out of him, try and get a three or, or a two, at least I don't want to lose him to a one because that's a waste of corruption. All right. Well, I go there. It's a little risky, maybe an unwise risk. Um, so he, 
he just what just happened? All right, he gets two army movements and he moved on to um onto the fellowship. That makes sense. And I go ahead and play Aomer, which is a great card to get early. Defends uh Helm's Deep. Perfectly happy with that card. And he continues to move. It looks like he's um uh mobilizing to attack Gondor, it looks like. Makes sense. All right, I love seeing file. That's great, and um, yeah, these are all these are all fine cards. I put Strider as guide here. It's a little tricky, but I think it makes sense because I know I'm starting revealed. It's a little bad because maybe I can't lose Gandalf this turn if I roll Will of the West, um, and could otherwise lose him in Moria. But I don't even know exactly how many character dice I'm going to roll. It it seems worth it to to be able to hide for sure and have some flexibility. I I also think to myself if I end up getting some extra um some extra character dice, I could play the file and that's okay. Um and in case I don't want to move a whole bunch of times, I probably my plan right now is probably hide and move, not move a second time because I don't want to get caught um, going through and then if I have extra character dice play file or or maybe maybe um, if I so this is a rule if I separate strider with we prove the swifter using a palantir die then strider is removed from the fellowship and then before the action is over Gandalf becomes guide and then I still get to use Gandalf's guide ability to draw a card from the Palantir. So I don't know that I'm, I mean, one possibility is I hide with Strider with any die that I want. Then I separate him using We Prove the Swifter with a Palantir to draw another character card using Gandalf. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that because I wouldn't get to Dole Amroth. I'd have to spend two dice. Um, so I, I don't know that that's a great plan, but it is a possibility. All right. So let's see what we roll. Um, it turns out that I roll no, no movement. I didn't. I didn't roll any movement at all. He rolls three eyes and gets all the musters he needs, um, and so I'm certainly glad that I put Strider as guide here because otherwise I wouldn't have even been able to hide. It's a little bit of a shame to not be able to move once a turn, and, um, because you know even if he has four dice, his chances are only close to fifty percent of hitting me. I don't remember maybe maybe sixty percent, but um, it's good to be able to move once a turn. All right, I use the regular muster to hide, thinking that I can use a Palantir to play other cards. It's, um, you know, I'm not going to get the full value of that Palantir because Gandalf's not going to draw me a card, but um, I'm very happy to be able to hide this turn without rolling any character dice. All right, he gets Saruman. Obviously, that makes sense. Um, and then what do I do with these army musters? I think it makes sense to get um, Helm's Deep ready. And... Um, you know, maybe he's coming. Maybe he's coming north with this. I, I don't know that he is, but I have scouts in my hand. So one other option would have been to play um, Grimbjorn for the card effect, and then use scouts to move an elite and a leader here. Um, then I don't even need the scouts. That's that's a possibility. But I I like. I like scouts for the trickiness, and I like using this this palantir to be able to um, play my character cards. All right, so he musters, gets Sauron to war. Um, he's happy to see all those musters, and then I move, I move um, armies again, and I put one from Osgiliath into Minas Tirith because um, I don't know that I want to use my scouts on that, and I don't intend to muster Gondor toward war because it seems like he's attacking me anyway. The difference, if I spend a muster. Um, then I'm sort of investing in the possibility of using a second muster on Minas Tirith in the future so that I can have, instead of four and one, I can have three and two. I can muster an elite in. So if if I instead I had mustered Gondor toward war, then when he attacks us, Gilead, these two guys get killed or whatever, can go anywhere, and then I can spend one muster right then to muster into Minas Tirith. Um, I definitely considered that, but... Um, I felt like I didn't want to accelerate him getting the Witch King next turn because he's a little behind on musters. He's probably okay on musters and probably will be, will be able to get the Witch King next turn. But I felt like getting a regular in there is pretty close to getting an elite in there. And I want to have Erebor ready um, for some point in the future. If he's starting to move these guys up, I don't want him, I don't want him to pick off that 
pick off that regular in Iron Hills. So that's why I did all of that. I think that's probably right. Who knows? Um, if you have comments, what, what would you do there? I would, I'm always interested to hear what other people would do. Um, okay, so he musters with this. Th this is an interesting choice. I mean, yes, you do want to get everybody to war. Um, he doesn't have anything that really requires those guys to be at war right away. It does scare me about getting Gandalf in the Wills of the West. Um, I don't know, though. I... I would I would be tempted to use that army movement. He has his he has his forces ready. I would be more tempted instead of using that as a muster for the South Rounds and Easterlings to to get these armies marching out. Because if he doesn't roll, how many how many movements do we expect him to roll next turn? He has eight dice. He's gonna have to probably he's gonna put in an eye. I mean, maybe he won't, but I'd think he'd put in one eye, maybe even two if I'm going through Moria. So he's gonna have seven dice. He's gonna expect to be able to roll three and a half attacks. These guys can go one, two, three. So you should be able to put Gondor to war with those two attacks and then muster. But maybe you're only going to get two attacks and maybe you don't want to have this army here and this army still back here. So I don't know. I think I would feel I, I would feel a little more comfortable in this situation with a um, with an army movement for that. Okay, so I go ahead and play file. It's always that's a, just a beautiful card. It makes a big difference. I'm hoping to do a video later uh, doing some analysis on the red and blue tiles to see how impactful they are. Obviously, it depends on the hunt pool by the time you get to Mordor, but one of the things that's nice about being revealed early with those little um, dice, is, or with those little tiles, is that if I do make it to, to Mordor, um, then and he doesn't have too many red tiles, then these blue tiles become more impactful with a smaller hunt pool. So that's that's something to consider, depending on how the hunt's going. And I'm certainly thinking I'm going to be drawing some tiles here. Um, okay, so he uses that to move. And uh, on we go. So this is turn three. Let's look at the card situation. This is my card situation. And here we go. So he allocates one eye, rolls two more. And I only get one character movement again. So for the last two turns, I've only gotten one. I don't want to be rushing through Moria, but I wouldn't mind um, a little more. I'm very happy to see Athelos here early in game. I'm thinking now I'm definitely keeping Strider in. Um, Gandalf will hopefully die. I wouldn't mind seeing a Will of the West here so that if Gandalf dies, I obviously put Gandalf back in charge. If Gandalf dies, then I could get him this turn. So I'm a little sad to not to not see a Will of the West. Um all right, so I go ahead and move. He um, catches me with that orc, so it's nice that he he put that on there, and I get a reveal, and that's a little unlucky. He's he's you know for me he's about um, fifty percent to successfully hunt me, but then he's also only fifty percent to reveal me. So you know seventy five percent chance to not be revealed into Moria, but um, but he does. And uh, we draw an extra tile. I take a one. Um, and then I, since I don't have a Will of the West here, if I had a Will of the West and I'm like, ah, I might not get Gandalf, then maybe I'd be more tempted to lose Gandalf to the one. But also because I'm getting hunted so much, I'm also thinking like, um, you know, I should make sure I get maximum value out of Gandalf if I can. Certainly not lose him to a one. So um, I do on my fourth tile uh, draw on the third movement of the game. Uh, so, so far there've been four hunt tiles. It's only been three moves um, and I've been revealed every step. Um, the the three gets drawn. And so I lose, I, I lose Gandalf and um, you know, that's, that's the most efficient use. Hopefully I'll roll a will of the West next round. Um, and now maybe it's good given all that hunting that has happened. Maybe it's good that I have Strider in there to, um, to soak up the corruption and, um, help hide. And also that, um, I drew Athlos early. So, you know, I, I don't know. I still think the, in most situations, it's good to get Strider for only, um, three dice, um, on round one especially with a Palantir there, I could redraw an extra character card. So, but, but looking at the way the game ended up going, I've, I've used Strider's hide ability. Um, I, I used it last round. I'm going to use it again this round. It, it's, it is going to be, it is going to be useful. And the three corruption, I'm certainly happy to have in the fellowship and not out. 
All right. So I have a bunch of musters. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that. He, um, you know, looking at this, um, you know, I think he can just get the Witch King, right? He did, he did get um, three attacks here. So, you know, move, attack, attack, and then muster the Witch King. That's, that's pretty good. And also, if you notice, he has um, Nazgul Search. So had I not been, had I not been revealed into there, he would have been able to Nazgul Search me and reveal me anyway. All right. So, um, oh, yeah. So he just mustered the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, which definitely makes me worried, thinking that he um, has a Day Without Dawn. Um, but uh, I'm going to be able to get Gandalf at the beginning of next round if I do roll. Oh, if I do roll Will of the West. So I don't know why he did that. Um, I guess he's worried about Gondor starting to muster up. But had he saved that muster, instead of getting the Southrons and Easterlings to war, he could have gotten the Witch King, I think, right? Move, that's one move. And then attack, attack. Yeah, this is exactly what we calculated at the beginning of the last round. So he could have gotten the Witch King this round, but he didn't. Um, that's interesting. All right, he plays Threats and Promises. Yeah, I mean, this is a good time if you're going to ever play it. Um, it does restrict me. Like, this is the most restricting. I have four of the five factions are um, not at war, and I only have Mustard Dice left. So, you know, I certainly would have considered um, Mustering Gondor at that point. But I sort of already settled myself to, to not. So I'm going to end up, I guess I'm going to end up using these musters to move the elves because what else, what else am I going to do with it? I don't have any, I do have wisdom of Elrond, so I could, if I'm really eager to muster somebody, I could, um, but I don't know. All right. So let's see what happens. Um, I go ahead and, um, hide. That makes sense. That's a good use of a muster die. And then I get the elves progressing towards war and he moves his his army's out and um gets another army ready here did he where did why didn't this other army move what did he just move so he just moved south rounds and easterlings that's interesting so is this army he's keeping this army here thinking that maybe he's gonna go um go up north with this army i think if you're gonna attack into asgiliath then you'd rather have this army here so i can't like scouts and do some sneakiness into north Thilian. um and then and then move into Miss Morrill. They wouldn't be at war, so yeah. So that's not actually that's not actually a threat. Um, yeah, I think at this point I was thinking, oh, what if I move this guy to North Philly and then he attacks? But it it, it doesn't help. Um, so I muster the elves again. I mean, getting the elves to war is great. At some point, I'm gonna. Uh, perhaps draw Kierden's ships. Um, Elven strongholds are often targets at some point in the game, so being able to get them close to war is good. Maybe I'll draw um, Power Too Great at some point and get them to war that way would be pleasant. So Threats and Promises, just, I don't know. It, it what, Did he have other options for what to play at that point? Um, Flocks of Crabane, I almost never want to play that because... Um, it's, you know, it just, it doesn't often result in a, in a big impact. Um, but if you're, if the fellowship is sitting in Moria, um, with your, you know, guaranteed, as long as you have two eyes, you're, you're going to roll four dice. Maybe that's the time to play Flocks of Kerbane. The other thing I probably would have done with this turn is I would have gotten, I would have gotten Minas Tirith under siege. I had three attacks. I would have gotten Minas Tirith under siege. And then I would have gotten the um the witch king and then i would have played denethor's folly with that with that um palantir die because that just softens up minas tirith and just makes it just makes it a much safer attack and then yeah i'm gonna maybe muster gondor a little bit um but i can i can bring my other armies in i'm gonna be able to take this over i don't know that he's getting dole amroth i mean maybe if you could get dole amroth this way you could attack Pilar gear. I'm still, no, now I'm at war. I'm at war right away. So I can muster once, take Lamed on, I can muster again. Um, so I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm ever taking, as Shadow, I don't know that I'm ever taking Dol Amroth without a big fight, given this setup. 
Um, you can maybe wait for a strategic moment. Like if next round I don't roll a lot of musters, then you can you know sneak into Dol Amroth. Um, okay, so that's the turn. He um, okay, so he uses that character die to get to do that. All right, I guess that makes sense. But couldn't I have just? Why didn't why why not leave these guys down there for now? And then move these guys, and then use that char use that character to attack to attack into Asgiliath. Um So I guess it makes certain promises go away. But why did I play that in the first place? I don't know. Okay, moving on. So. He decides to kill Flox of Crabane. That probably makes sense. And allocates one eye, gets uh, two more. And I'm, you know, not particularly happy to have five rolls leaving um, <laughs> Moria. But I also have to do it at some point. And... It's still, you know, on sixes, he still only has like a 60% chance, I think, of catching me, even with five dice. So I still have some hope. And ironically, on the the first move of the game, um, I don't get caught, is the is the role where he has the most, the most dice to roll. So he misses me. That's the first safe movement. Um, but then he plays uh, Nazgul Search. So, you know. He catches me, that makes sense. And he gets his Nazgul ready here, which is nice. Um, so I'm revealed, he gets to draw an extra tile and it's one, I take it. Um, and I don't mind being out of a uh, Morgul wound range for the time being, though I'm gonna immediately hide. And again, Strider is doing a good job. So he's now done one, two, three hides with, with his ability. So he's doing a lot of work there. Um, continued harassing of the fellowship. I think that's a great, great movement there, um, given that I could have moved again. And yeah, this thing, does that, is that a useful next movement? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think that's sort of an example for maybe attacking, getting more attacks in. Because if this army had been here in Minas Tirith, then I could be moving armies into Osgiliath. I could be using that extra movement to take, you know, to occupy Lasarnach, something like that. Um, even with this, I would probably move these guys into East Rune. Um, I don't know. Maybe these guys start coming over to Lorien. I don't know. It's it's not entirely clear what what to do with that extra half movement at this point. Okay. Um, so I passed because, you know, if he hadn't moved on to the fellowship, then I think I might have considered moving again. But given that he's moved on to the fellowship, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not in any rush to move. All right. So he attacks um, there. It makes sense. He misses. I get a hit and then I retreat to Pilar gear. You know, I thought about retreating to dead marshes or someplace, but I, I don't know what what good that really does. Um so beefing up Pilar gear so that if this army comes in, that, that felt that felt better. All right. Um, I'm not going to move again with five dice uh, on fives. Uh, just I'm, I'm not in that much of a rush. So I play Athelos, Strider as guide. We expect to heal two um, with him as guide, and we get very lucky and, and heal three. So that's just, I mean, that's, I think that's the only card in the whole game that can heal three with a single card. So that's just, that's just a huge swing. And what I like about this is if Strider was not guide, this would have healed zero, um, that particular role. So just a big swing. I don't think either of us feel particularly bad about that luck because, you know, the difference between two and three is only one. We expect two. Um, and just all the hunts have been so brutal so far. We're like, okay, well that balances out a little bit. All right. Um, he then now puts Minas Tirith under siege. I go ahead and start mustering up. Maybe I should muster in Dol Amroth. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to do Corsairs of Umbar. Um, 
and that was, I mean, that was the other reason maybe to rush the, the South rounds and Eastern war, but he didn't, but he didn't have, um, Corsairs one bar. So I go ahead and muster in Pilar gear. It's a little bit risky. If that elite gets killed, I would rather have it in Dole Amroth, but I also think, okay, maybe I'll inflict some, some, uh, damage along the way. And I think that I still have time to do more mustering. Um, all right. And, oh, and I wanted, I wanted a Will of the West that round to get Gandalf, but I didn't get a Will of the West. Um, okay. And then he gets the Wish King. So that's good. It always feels bad when, uh, Fellowship, well, it feels bad to the Fellowship. It feels great to, uh, Shadow when you have nine dice to four. Uh, that's always good. So he's at the nine dice to four and, um, I get rid of, we prove the Swifter. I don't think that I'm separating um strider at this point and i think maybe i'll still play horn of gondor it's possible to save some corruption depending on what my role is um okay so he allocates one eye rolls one more and i, I get my will of the west so i need to get him right away in case of day without dawn so that makes sense and then um I fuss at Gandalf for being late. He plays Denethor's Falling now, which makes sense. Oh, also I'm feeling, I think I must have just drawn, I just draw, drew uh, Imrahil of Dolamroth. So that's obviously, I feel great about that in case he has some sneakiness. I just I just need one muster. I can use that one muster to get an elite in there normally. And then I can finish it off with um, Imrahil of Dolamroth once it's under siege. Um, so, so that's good. I'm also happy to see Mithril Coat and Sting. I don't want to play it yet because um, of Nazgul strike can get rid of it uh i want to get i want to get to mordor and then and then play it and i'm also hoping to not see war Masar on toil so that I can get it out of my hand um all right so denethor's folly is going to do some work um and i move he gets me i get revealed again and i take a random maybe, maybe i shouldn't um I don't know exactly why I took random. I think I was I was a little worried about um, Warren with Sorrow and Toil being able to pull so many cards out of my hand. Um, it is a little risky because if I hit Strider at that point, then I can't use his ability to hide. Um, and I am about to be revealed, but I don't know. I don't know if you take a random there or not. And I'm a little sad to have lost Bormir because now I know the Horn of Gondor is useless, but uh, that was a risk. I'm certainly happier to lose um, Boromir than Strider. Um, you know, I guess maybe I wanted a Hobbit to be able to reinforce um, Lorien or to be able to come down here. Um, also could have gone into Fangorn and then Gandalf would be free to move. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's right or not. Okay, Black Captain commands. He gets more Nazgul. That's good. And then he does a good attack on Minas Tirith, makes some progress. I can't play cards. And um, he reduces, but um, manages manages to kill it. So, um, you know, played Relentless Assault. I'm always a little nervous about that as, as a shadow, but, you know, took it out in one attack. So that's, that's pretty efficient. He has plenty of other dudes around here. So I think that's okay. Um, good use of Denethor's Folly. I think about moving again this turn, and so maybe I should have hidden with, um, I could have used Strider's ability, hide with this, and then move again. Um, but I'm worried if you look at these dice, he can get all the way to Dol Amroth. So I can't, I can't actually safely use this. I, I need to save this muster to actually be able to muster in Dol Amroth. Maybe one option is to sit um, revealed, see what he does, and then choose to, if I want to use the character to hide or the, um, muster to hide, if he's not coming towards Dole Amroth, then I can, then I can use the muster to hide and then move again. But, um, I don't want to stay, I don't want to stay revealed in case he has, uh, nasty cards. Um, that said, he probably would have already played them. Um, if he had it because I was revealed on that movement. So, but people make mistakes. Maybe, he, you know, wanted to deal with mistakes. I don't know. So anyway, I decided to hide I, uh, right then. I think that makes, I don't think that's particularly bad. It seems likely he's going to come after um, the Lamarath at some point. So he 
does an army movement again gets more rerolls here i think he's doing a great job keeping up the pressure on the fellowship um i muster a leader here and a regular here thinking that this army is going to survive long enough to be able to retreat into um into dole amroth so i don't know if that's exactly right but And I also calculated that unless he has another, unless he has ringwraiths are abroad, um, he's not going to be able to attack with this army into Dol Amroth because he doesn't have leadership here. So he's going to have to spend one one character die to move armies, and then he only has two more attacks. So um, this army will be able to retreat into Lamroth, and then I'll be able to um, muster, and then I'll still, on top of that, have Imrahil of Dolamroth available. That's my plan. So I think, I think that's why I went ahead and mustered it now, because I think, well, if I get another regular in there, um, it's just one extra die. It's extra damage that I can inflict on on this these attacking armies, which are almost certainly coming in. All right, so he draws a card there. Um, you know, I think that I think that makes sense. Um, he has cruel weather already, so you don't really need to cycle super hard into character cards. Um, you know, I don't know, may maybe a character card there. Yeah, but this is a great card. Always nice to have the flexibility of putting uh, an Isengard elite. Turns on a lot of combat cards. Uh, turns on fighting Urkai. So, all right. Um, he goes ahead and moves Nazgul as we expected. And then um, attacks into Pilar gear, and I play Confusion because I have six cards in my hand. I should definitely play something. Um, confusion is nice because if he rolls ones, then he doesn't get to re-roll them. Um, it can potentially inflict a good amount of damage. And um, you know what else to play? I'm thinking about saving Daylight for the attack in Lamadon, so that he can't um, necessarily. Uh, eliminate that depending on how many casualties he inflicts all right so he rolls two ones um and it manages to inflict no damage and i managed to inflict two so he took a total of four damage that was pretty rough um but he goes ahead and presses because he has enough he has enough armies here and then at this point he kind of has to resupply i don't think it makes sense to attack into lamadon um so he takes lesser knock that makes sense and re reinforces this all right, so um, that's perfectly good. I'm now up to five dice. I feel happy about that. He gets uh, the Balrog a little late, um, but still can be useful if you attack Moria. And um, he also drew Shadows on Misty Mountain, so he just was in a Lorien mood. So probably he's going to play Shadows on Misty Mountain at some point, go after Lorien, though I don't know that at this point. Okay. Um, he allocates one eye, he rolls two more, and I get a whole bunch of Wills of the West. I'm obviously very nervous about that if he has Day Without Dawn. If he doesn't have Day Without Dawn, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have that. Um, but of course, I'm going to use one one muster for, or one um, Will of the West as my first action. Um, and I go ahead and move, and um, he misses. So, um, you know, once in a while, you're going to you're going to get lucky. Uh, I think that's 60% chance to hit. So it's, it's definitely lucky, but not like super crazy lucky. Um, he doesn't have Day Without Dawn. He attacks into Lamadon and um, does... Uh, attempts to play this just to cycle, um, but it's illegal, so he just put it back in his hand. And I'm thinking, does it make sense to play Daylight now? His expected amount of damage is around three, I think. Um... And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really need to. Um, if he inflicts four, then obviously I'm a little sad to lose the elite. But if he inflicts only three, then I'd rather save daylight for you know ensuing combat in Dol Amroth to try and to try and let that survive as long as possible. Um, I'm going to be able to muster it pretty fully, and I on top of that have it Hill of Dual Amroth. If for something, you know, goes horribly wrong and he does five hits, I can muster once, he'll attack, and then I can still play Hill of Dual Amroth and have a good good army in there. Alright, so that's why I end up not playing the card. Um maybe should have played Shield Wall. I don't I don't know. Um he 
I don't, I don't play a card. And um, he inflicts three as expected. I inflict two to him and then he presses. And maybe you don't press, maybe you spend an extra die um, so that I don't get the elite in there. But yeah, I think it, I think it probably makes sense. And then he moves, he moves along. I don't know that given the size of this army at this point, um, I muster an elite in there, obviously, and then he puts it under siege. I don't know, given the size of this army, um, that he's going to be able to take this out. Um, but maybe it, maybe it makes sense to, to try. Um, he switches now, Shadows on Misty Mountain. I move again because, you know, on one hand, I don't, I don't want to take too much corruption, but on the other hand, I need to, I need to keep making progress. Um, I didn't have to do that. I could have played Smeagol helps nice master with that character die and then use these will of the West to reinforce militarily. So, you know, seeing shadows on Misty Mountain here, maybe it does make sense to, to not move again and, and muster in, muster up Lorien. I don't know. I don't know what's right. So he catches me, zero reveal, and um, orcs multiplying again. So he's uh, right. We he got confused for a second and thought they would go on Moria, but instead we move them to Dol Guldur. Um, and then I hide. He. Um, what's happening? I guess I'm just moving again. I'm thinking. I can get, I can make it, I can make it. And he's making decent military progress. That's interesting. I don't know. Do you move three times that turn or do you use those wills of the West to just beef up the elves, get the elves to war? And then, um, you know, you can just start mustering. It's clear that he's, it's clear that he's coming and attacking them. I don't know. That's interesting. All right. What's amazing is on that movement, he misses. So that is, um, only a 12% chance that he misses that. Uh, that's pretty unlikely. So yeah, the hunt, the hunt was pretty weird. And then he plays cruel weather now. And you know, maybe that makes sense. It's a, it's a little strange to me because now I know next turn I can make it in, uh, and I won't have to over, over move. Um, sometimes you can get the cruel weather effect just by, um, just by making the free people or the free people player worry that you're going to play it. Um, you know, if you get revealed into the stronghold, then, then you miss it. But I don't know, maybe, maybe that's the right. Maybe that's the right thing to do. And he's worried, he's worried about playing Grand, I guess, you know, if I had, if I had a few more units here, maybe I could play play Grand in there. Yeah. What if I play half orc and goblin men here and then try Grand? see if I could take it out in one round. That's interesting. Okay. Um, cruel weather it is. And now look at this. This is an interesting moment. What do you discard? So Dane Ironfoot's guard, King Brand's men, Smeagol, Imrahil, last battle, Mithril Coden, Stain, Grimbjorn. So what I was thinking about was you can pause if you want and think about what you would discard comment below. Um, so what I was thinking here was I definitely want to keep Smeagol Helps Nice Master. That's a great card. Um, definitely Mithril Coat and Sting, 100% keeping. Imrahil of Dol Amroth feels worth keeping. It's a great combat effect. And also he has this besieged. Um, last battle, uh, Daylight is a, is a powerful uh, combat effect, King Brandsman, good combat effect, and I wouldn't mind playing it. Cycles in another character, uh, it replaces itself with a strategy card, Dan Ironfoot's guard. So is he going to attack up in Erebor? Do I want to keep scouts? I like scouts because these guys coming in. I think in retrospect, um, maybe it's okay to get rid of scouts because I can move these guys in with an army muster. And he's not quite ready to attack yet. Um, and I don't know that he's coming through Dale or Old Forest Road. I don't know. Maybe these guys are coming up to Old Forest Road. And so since I did not choose to get the elves to war, it sure will be nice to be able to retreat this guy into Woodland Realm. 
So um, I end up I end up uh, discarding. Um, so I declare again. That makes sense. Um, I end up discarding after some misclick. I end up discarding Dana and Foot's guard. Um, you know, I'm just thinking. Okay, Airborne is not that likely to get attacked, but we shall see. Okay, so he allocates one eye. He rolls two more, and I get great movement. So it's not guaranteed that I can get to um, that that I can make it to Mordor this turn. I don't even know that I need to push that hard, um, given the state of his military. But at this point, I'm actually feeling okay on corruption because of, um, you know, there were a lot of reveals, but it was a lot of ones. And I used Gandalf efficiently, and I got Athelos, and he doesn't have any red tiles, and I have this blue one, and I have this other blue one. Um, so I'm a little, you know, I might take some corruption, but I can lose companions, right? Like effectively right now, I'm at negative eight corruption with three moves to go. And my general guideline is... You know, if you can, you can expect to take maybe three corruption on average per step. I mean, it obviously it depends on the situation, but I sort of count on something in the ballpark of 15 corruption uh, on Mordor. A lot, again, depends on the tiles, but let's just say 15. Um, so if I can come in at negative three given companions, then I'm fine. So, all right, so let's see what happens. I go ahead and move first. Maybe he drew um, Day Without Dawn. So I don't want to leave myself with two Wills of the West out there. Um, I move and he misses. Um, and then he gets Nazgul in place. So I know that he doesn't have cruel weather. So I'm just going to, you know, try and try and keep moving at this point. Um, he decides to give up on Dual Amroth. And, you know, that's probably right. But it's a little bit of a shame Um you know, he does he does have um half orcs and goblin men and he has this this pal this palantir and he had all those dudes there. I don't know. I might I might try it. Take a little take a little stab at it. It it is a little risky to use Grand there, but he has Horde from the East. Like Yeah, I don't know. It's a little tricky. He's gonna go after Lorien. That makes sense. I mean he has some good cards. Durance Bane obviously is great. Um, has some options. I might have considered putting a, like, what is this Nazgul doing down here? Is he going to move that? Yeah, so he left this Nazgul here. I don't know why. I think that should go up to East Rune. Um, or maybe, yeah, probably East Rune to be able to move these guys in, or maybe in, in Moria to be able to move those guys in in case next round you roll a bunch of um, character dice and you can't move these armies without um, without having a leader. I think I would use that for that purpose. Okay, so I move again, and at this point he gets three hits. Um, I'm a little worried about drawing an eye because that would be that'd be three damage and reveal. Um, but he gets a two, and um, I think at this point I take the two, which is a little weird because why didn't I take the two before when I was revealed? I mean, this is I'm not even revealed, so I'm not too worried about using Strider's ability. I think I I think what happened was. I realized that I made a mistake before by taking that to, uh, by taking that random companion. So I don't repeat the mistake. And now I just take the corruption. Um, I want to be out of the range of Morgul wound if I get revealed. Um, and I don't want to lose Strider at this point. And it's okay. It's okay to go up to three corruption. So might as, might as well wait a little bit. Um, all right. So, he plays candles with corpses. That's great. Um, we expect that to do one and a half. It does one. Fair. Pretty fair. Um, I move a third time. I know for sure I'm making it. And at this point, we can say he's almost certainly going to hit me, right? He has four dice, um, f three dice and a reroll on four. So he's definitely going to hit me. But um, he only has a 50% chance of revealing me. And so... Um, it feels worth it to get in this turn. I have a good situation with the blue tiles. I know that I have Smeagol Helps Nice Master coming. Um, and I just hope that he doesn't 
doesn't reveal me because I know he doesn't have cruel weather. So I'm not, I'm not worried about, um, getting locked out that way. Um, he does hit me, uh, which is very likely. And then he draws an eye. So he reveals me 50, 50 chance. That's, that's how it goes. Um, and for one corruption, uh, I just take the one. I think that makes sense. And then we draw another eye. And so that's, that's just good luck. You know, that was pretty low odds of, um, of drawing that eye again, only two out of seven, 28%. But, um, you know, I guess it balances out, uh, that I got revealed. So, okay. The eyes go there and he goes ahead and starts mustering up, uh, Isengard plays Horde from the East. So as soon as he plays Horde from the East, I'm like, oh no, why did I discard Dane Ironfoot's guard? So if you decided to keep Dane Ironfoot's guard, good for you. You would be more prepared for that attack that's coming in. Um, and I go ahead and use um, Strider's ability to hide, which is a, which could be risky if he had, um, you know, any of the tile drawing cards like orc patrol or something like that but i noticed that he does not have any character dice left or palantirs so i know that that cannot be played and therefore it is safe to hide and i've used starter's ability again to hide i think that's like four times that i've used it to hide um and then i'll use i'll likely use this to to play my um Smeagol helps nice master and then start of next turn i'll be ready to move even if he draws a red tile i'll be able to get that first movement without him using a red tile I think the other reason why I was willing to go up a little higher on corruption was because I knew that I had those blue tiles in there. So I didn't want to be at one corruption and then draw the file of Galadriel because that's a waste of the healing. So I wanted, I wanted to be in this sort of middle range. All right. Um, so he musters an elite here and I'm thinking, ah, Dane. Okay. So this, this hunt pool, and now he starts moving on, moving, moving it. Um, Morian. Um, so I finally draw my first Ent. I'll keep that ready in case he attacks out of there. And um, he draws Orc Patrol. I always like getting to play those tile drawing cards before we get to Mordor so that if I draw an eye, the eye gets to go back in. But so he allocates one eye. He draws, uh, he rolls three. And, you know, that's actually not too bad given the percentage chance on eyes because this hunt pool is pretty, pretty light. Now, obviously, I'm very happy having two blue tiles and no red tiles in a pretty small hunt pool. Um, and I'm just going to hope to not to not draw the eye. I want to move right away because he has a lot of he hasn't played any red tiles yet. So I'm just thinking, he, you know, the odds of him drawing one is going up. Um, I do have... Um, I do see this incoming attack and I'm sort of regretting having not, um, having not already gotten the elves to war. This was a pretty predictable attack. I had some time early and I also see that I have a lot of musters and while I don't want him to play red tiles, um, I also want to be able to defend Lorien. So you can think, what would you do here? Would you move first because you don't want him to play a red tile or would you maybe try and muster the elves and get one extra muster in before before he attacks so um i decide to muster the elves to war here and i am a little worried about an attack from dimmerald dale into lorian um right now but you know i think that would slow him down by two uh by two actions it's inefficient um, and maybe I would end up battling it. Maybe I would just, I don't know. It's not, it's not entirely clear what would be best if he, um, if he attacks me, I think I, maybe I would end up going into siege. So it might be a little bit of a waste, but it also slows him down, but he doesn't attack me. Um, instead he, um, gets his armies in place, which gives me time to, um, muster. So I get an extra elite into Lorien. And I think, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance that this army can survive against that. Um, 
and now I go ahead and move. So he he didn't have any red tiles, or if he did, he didn't he didn't play them. Um, it did sort of pressure him to to make these attacks because if he didn't if he didn't progress towards Lorien promptly, then I would have been able to muster even more because I had three musters. Um, so one to get them to war, and then two more. I could have gotten it up to five units. So um, that's why I ended up doing it that way. I move and um, I get lucky um, to not. Well, I don't know. It's my odds were, you know, slightly in favor to not get an eye, um, but I'm very happy to not see an eye. Um, two is totally fine, and um, and at this point, you know, I don't want to get so high in corruption that if he gets his elders bane or something like that, um, or big eye, that I would end up going over. So I do take a random here and get lucky. That's perfect. Um, really, the best draw to get Legolas or Gimli, and. Um, he goes ahead and plays um, half orcs and goblin men on Lorien, so that he can then play fighting Urukai. That confuses me a little bit because I have Grand in hand right now. If you knew that you were going to play half orc and goblin men, then I think I would leave an extra regular in Dimmerald Dale because why not? Um, it's not like you're so low on. Um, regulars that you wouldn't mind having an extra one there, um, but I think this army is big enough to be able to to be able to fight Lorien, um, especially with Durin's Bane off the top. I think I think I would just play Grand, play Grand, and then if it doesn't work out well, then um, then muster in. Are you really worried about this army attacking you with Durin's Bane in hand and Grand no card round one? Yeah. But, all right, so he plays Half-Orc and Goblin Men, uh, and then I have the chance to play Mithril Coat and Sting. I don't, I, you know, there's enough time on the board that even though I didn't roll that many um, character movement, I'm okay. And I have rings. I have three rings, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay. I don't know if it's worth it to push with eyes uh, being five, um, so we'll see. So he goes ahead and play Fighting Urukai, and we have this giant battle in Lorien. And I end up playing, um, he uses Balrog, of course. Um, it does a little bit, and then I end up playing Daylight here. He plays Orc Patrol. I, you know, I guess the Fellowship is safe enough that um, it wouldn't, it's not, it's not worth it to play Orc Patrol, and there's still a bunch of eyes in there. So your chances of actually doing damage are quite low. So, you know, I hate to, I hate to play these for combat instead of messing with the fellowship, but it does, I think given this particular hunt pool, that probably, that probably does make a lot of sense. Um, and it is nice that he has the extra um, leadership in here because now he's still going to be at four leadership even after forfeiting two. So, um, so I'm we're we're rolling we're rolling pretty well we're all we're doing damage to each other, um, but and I play I play a bunch of combat cards but um, he ends up being able to take them out on round four of the combat, and he ends up with this. So, um, you know maybe having that extra elite in there did did make a difference. Um, I don't know I haven't figured out exactly what the odds were, but I think if it were me I might have just tried it with Grand first. Okay, so he gets he gets Lorien, and um, I go ahead and move again with this pool, and it is scary to face an eye, but there are ten in here, um, and I know that I could lose Strider, so I'd be up at seven, and it's risky. It's a little risky maybe maybe I shouldn't rush that and shouldn't use a ring here. I think because I have Mithril Coat and Sting, I'm thinking that I will use Mithril Coat and Sting on a regular. I normally like to save Mithril Coat and Sting for a red tile, but my thinking here is you want to keep making progress um, and it does not actually increase his number of attacks this round because he has he already has an attack and he's probably using that to get um, the mouth anyway. Um, and the chances of getting two eyes in a row are relatively low. So I think that's why I ended up doing it. Um, as it turns out, I got a three and 
here is an interesting choice. Probably the right thing to do is to take Strider because I'm not revealed and um, I don't want to get too high on corruption and I want to be able to use him efficiently. So at some point in the future, you know, these eyes might only be one or two damage and then, or I, or I draw this one and then um, I won't be able to use Strider's three corruption in an efficient manner. So it probably is correct to take Strider here guaranteed. Instead, I take a random and I get a Hobbit. So I'm up to seven corruption. I'm feeling a little worried. He hasn't played his Ultra's Bane yet. And there is a three in the, there is a three in the pool. So um, yeah, I, th I think that was a mistake on my part. Should have taken Strider when I could. I, obviously he's served me very well, but I'm doing okay. I am hidden right now. Um, so there aren't, yeah, I mean, half of them reveal me. So maybe I'll still get a little more use out of Strider's ability. All right. I draw Elven Rope. He still hasn't played any red tiles. And I'm feeling okay on Corruption. I have three more movement with... Um, what is that? I'm effectively right now at uh, two if I manage to use these guys effectively. So I have 10 Corruption to spare, roughly. All right. And the... And the and he rolled a whole bunch of eyes. So he allocated two and then rolled three more. And now I'm feeling pretty worried. If I draw some eyes, I get a great roll. Um, I move and get a one. So, you know, that is just, you know, it's obviously, yeah, I guess, I don't know, maybe that's close to middle of the pack. I mean, obviously the negative two or the negative one is better. The zero is probably better than the one. Um, the three is worse. So it's the fourth out of 10, fourth best. Okay. Um, so now I have this one and it's like, well, what should I do? I don't want to go up to eight corruption and then Isildur's Bane, you know, can put me at 11. So I take a random here and I'm, I'm definitely regretting not having taken Strider before. Um, I end up getting Gimli. So it could be, could be better, could be worse. Honestly, I'm per perfectly happy with that. Um, Strider would have been a real waste, but Gimli is just a little bit of a waste. And Erebor, yeah, what happened to Dane? My mistake. Um, so where is he getting his other victory points? You know, um, I guess he's coming down to Helm's Deep with these armies. He's going to he's gonna try and take Helm's Deep and he's going to take Erebor. Um, yep. That's possible. I wonder if you if you try crashing into Woodland Realm or do you go for Airborne? It's it's going to be tough. The Fellowship is making good progress, and I have a bunch of movement. Um, I draw a card here because I feel like I have some time. I don't need to um, I don't need to win this round. There's no way he's getting enough victory points, so I think might as well draw and see what I get. Um, I don't know what else I would play other than Elven Rope. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm thinking. I mean, he might start drawing character cards, but at this point, the fellowship is so close. Um, it's, it's looking, and I have Mithril Coat and Sting. It's, it's pretty looking pretty good for the fellowship at this point. Um, so I'm not sure why this army moved to here. If you were going to do this movement, I think it's better probably to move this elite into East Rune first and then get these guys here because I don't know what else these guys are doing. I think I would rather have um, eight and two and then two regulars back here than this situation. You know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And now, after all that time, having held scouts for this attack that's going to happen, um, I just get Helm's Deep ready. And so... Yeah, maybe all all that time ago. I, this was like, I've been holding this card for a really long time, and I ended up never never playing it and never using scouts. Um, so kind of ironic. Um, but it did give me give me options. All right, so I muster into Woodland Realm because you know maybe these guys are getting attacked at some point, and where else should I muster? And um, 
<laughs> Maybe I should have played it. That would have been funny. Okay, but uh, you know, whatever. Might as well muster into a Woodman Realm. That's that's fine. And then um, I play Elven Rope. I you know I could have moved there, but. I'm going to get enough. I, theoretically, I should get enough movement. I'd rather have the Hunt Pool. I don't need to be moving against six damage at this point, uh, even with Mithril Coat and Sting. And um, I just need two more movement. So the odds of being able to get two movement are quite high. I really only need one movement um, because then I can use a ring. And I still have I still have Strider. So even if I get revealed, um, I should be able to use his ability to hide. Theoretically, with five dice, I expect to roll two and a half movement. So prob probably fine, plus a ring. All right, he plays Palantir here. I think that's nice. Um, it's good timing for it, but um, it's probably too little too late. So I get Bilbo's Song. That's always nice. I'm feeling even more secure at this point. I finally discard Grimbjorn, and then um, I get a single Will of the West. So I am... A little nervous here if he if he gets an eye then I um, I can't lose Strider I would have to take three then use Strider's ability to hide um, and then go ahead and move with a ring but even that would be okay because I could soak up four corruption if I get another eye so it's definitely it's definitely looking good. I mean, maybe he drew a red tile, um, but uh, I don't get an eye. I get a negative two, and now the game is under a hundred percent guaranteed for the free people because I can move safely. And even if he puts a red tile in the pool, I have to throw a coat and sting. So um, the game is now over at this point, um, and. I guess maybe if he had, yeah, no, there's no, there's no way for him to reveal me. Even if he had a tile drawing card, he could draw the zero, but then I can hide again with Strider. So, um, yeah, so that's the game. He attacks to Ford's Vise, and then I move and get an eye. And that's the game. So let's look at the statistics. Um, you know, he really rolled a lot of extra eyes. There were a few turns where he chose to allocate two, and there were some times when having those eyes were beneficial. Um, but in general, I think you don't want to see a whole bunch of extra eyes, and the combat was, uh, you know, a little light. But overall, um, you know, pretty bad hunt luck for the fellowship at the beginning and then it ended up ended up really evening out and then a pretty pleasant mortal run without um without any red tiles in there plus mithril coat and staying and drawing the file along the way so that's the game uh if you have any other if you have suggestions for games or if you have any comments on this game i'd love to i'd love to hear about it and if you have any games that you'd like me to analyze um let me know and I will try continuing my coverage of the 2021 um, tournament uh, coming up. Thanks so much.